lovely Frosty friends, welcome back to the full coverage mini series, part five A, B, who knows what it is. So you're probably asking yourself why there's another video to do with the whole stitching and parking method. Well, it's not that there's a method to my madness, it's just utter madness. It's the only way to describe it. So the first video, so video part five is the video that is the very, very beginning of stitching. However, I was stitching with two strands of thread on a loop start method on a 25 count even weave. Before I'd even got to the end of the first square, I knew there was no way I was gonna be stitching this with two strands on a 25 count. But it gave you the concept and it gives the information about how you start from the very, very beginning and how you use the loop method start. This video is showing you a, like a continuation from where it left off. So I ripped out everything that was in a two strand, started afresh, restitched to a roughly the same point as the last video with a single strand on a 25 count, which is a much better coverage for me to work with. So for those of you that wanted to see it from the very, very beginning, from stitch number one, then you need to go back and watch the last video first. This video basically is how you then progress going forwards, but it also will show you how I start my thread with a single strand. So that's basically what this video is. So this video is a continuation from the last one. It will give you a little bit more further along how we, how we progress and how we deal with the threads that are actually parked. The last video, we didn't really work on that. We just worked on how we get started. So this video is all about picking up those existing threads and running with them. But also, this one will also demonstrate how I, how I start my threads with a single strand. So, yeah, like I said, there isn't any method to madness. It's just utter craziness. <laughs> so let's head on over to the stitching, shall we? Okay, we're back again. If you knew how hard this has been, <laughs> So it's actually another whole day has gone past. Um, yeah, let's just say a third time lucky, hopefully. So I'm back again. So if all of a sudden you go, oh, Tracy, you've changed your nail polish. That's because, yes, since the last time I started this, I'm actually recording it on another day and I've been to the nail shop since then. So I've now stitched this up um, in a single strand so instead of two strands we've now got a single strand for 25 count that is my preference so i showed you the loop method on the first portion of this video um, and now i'm going to be doing it on a single strand because 25 count for me it needs to be a single strand but it gave you the idea for those of you that were going to be stitching um, sort of two strands on maybe an you know a 16 count an 18 count or a 20 count or for some people it may be that actually they quite like the look and the fluffiness of the of the stitches on a 25 count that's fine but for me i was just struggling with the whole yeah it was making it much harder than it needed to be so we're back with single strands and it's all been adjusted accordingly and i've Restitched it so let me and I've also blown the chart up to try and show you the chart a little easier as well So we're gonna head on down to the stitching. So if I bring you down here And you'll see I've got all of my park threads here. I think I might have done marginally more than where we where the last bit of footage actually shows um, But you'll get the gist with the following bit so we're going we're gonna to go through just a bit more of this so that you get the idea of the park. And if we can get a bit of a stagger going, then you'll understand the concept. So we'll have to see how much time we've got. So I'm going to start a single new thread. Now, I start my threads for single thread different to how most people would probably do it. Um, but this is how I do mine. So I take my thread down in my top right-hand hole of my square. So exactly the same way as I did with my, um, my two strands. 
and then I bring it up in my start hole, which is my bottom left. And then I bring it down. So it almost looks very similar to how you saw it before. Now, this is where it changes. So I leave that tiny little tail sticking out. And then I sort of push that little tail down as I go down. Now, by going down, it sort of takes the tail with it. And then I just, I mean, I don't actually tug it. I just lay it flat. And then I bring my needle back up to do my second half of my cross. And again, I don't tug it very hard at all. I just wait until I feel, wait until I feel that it's, it's cool like that. And then I take it down. And now I can tug on that to my heart's content and you can see that isn't going anywhere. So that's, that's how I do my single strands. I don't do a, a, an away, you know, waist knot or, or even tie it into the bit at the back, to be honest, this, this is how I do mine. So now I'm just gonna go along and I'm gonna do these three stitches, the bottom legs first. Let's make this thread a little shorter. Where are we? There we are. And then I'm going to go back and do my second half of these legs. And I don't know if you can tell, because obviously I've restitched all this, so you would have just seen it go from being big, big puffy floss to um, thinner floss. <laughs> so there you go. So that is my three, three of these. So we've got one more to do there. So we'll do that as a single cross. And there's another one over here. So much easier with a single strand for me on this count. And then we've got one more, which I think might be off the camera. So I might have to zoom you out a little bit so you can see. It's the only trouble with having the chart as big as it was. So let me whiz you over. Um, so I've got one more, which is this, this one down here, which is um, second one in. There. So we're stitched all of those in that section. There. So now that I've stitched those, I'm going to mark those to say that I've stitched them. See, so I've even bought pencils, people, just so I could do this for you. So we're going to do some colouring in now, which is going to tell me that I've stitched. I've stitched those. You can tell my colouring skills are not fabulous. So we'll, and this one here. So we've stitched all those stitches. So now we need to go park our thread. So let me unzoom you. I'm gonna have to move this around a little bit, I'm afraid. So let's put that there, like that. So you can see from the chart that that's that's the symbol that we were stitching. And then down here, we've got the same symbol. So I want to go park my thread in my start hole. So if you imagine that's, these are your four, these are your four corners. Let me get a pencil. So these are your four corners that you'd stitch in. And obviously I bring my, my thread up here and go down into here and then I'll bring my thread up in this bottom right hand corner and take it up to my top left. So because you've got these four holes and it doesn't matter whether you're looking at this even weave or whether you're looking at Ada, the principle is the same. So when I'm counting down, so I won't look at this here and think that is my, that is my first hole because my first hole is actually at the bottom of the square. So I'll always have that blank section so when I'm counting, I will go down to the bottom left-hand corner 
of the square to say, okay, right, well, that's one, that's two, that's three. So I know I need to put mine in hole four. Hole four down from there. So let me zoom you in again. It's a bit difficult with this blown up, isn't it? Okay. So because I know that I'm going the second row in and it's one, two, three, it's four down. Let me move this thread out of the way because it's in the way. So it's the second column in. So that's one, that's two. Number three, I'm expecting something in because I've marked it. Let's just share this with you. So that's one, that's two. Number three, I'm expecting something in it. There is something in it. So I'm gonna park directly under that one because that is hole four. And then I take my needle off. Now I'll mark that to say that's parked. There we go. Now, the beauty of the parking method is as you start parking your threads in here, you will start to sort of use your park threads as your counting because you won't need to count everything because you're going to rely on your parking threads. So let me just move everything out of the way. Okay, so we have our thread. Let me zoom you back out. So we're actually gonna work on this symbol here. Now that's our next, our next bit of thumb. So if I bring you down, she says, okay. So we're gonna do that one, that one, and then three in a line. So with my single strand, obviously if you're doing double, you're gonna sort of follow me, in that you're gonna go into your top right-hand corner of your square, and you're gonna take your thread down. Now at this point, if you're working double thread, two, two strands, you'll have a loop. I don't have a loop, I have a little stick. So I'm now gonna hold that with my finger out of the way and I'm gonna put my needle down in my number one leg of my hole, which will be my bottom left, which is this hole here. And I'm gonna bring my needle up until I start to see that moving. Now for me, for you it's fine, you're just gonna catch your loop and off you go. Me, I'm gonna bring that thread right down and then I'm gonna go back down. At this point, your thread is already anchored now I'm gonna bring my needle up at my second leg, which is your bottom right hand corner, which will be this one. And then we're gonna go back up. And then we're gonna finish our second leg, like so. So there's your first one. So now I'm gonna stitch this one here. So we're gonna do that one, and then we've got the three in a row that are underneath that. You're gonna to have to let me know how you're getting on with this and whether the instructions are making sense and that you're getting it. Because it really isn't as difficult as it looks when it was, Sometimes parking looks complicated, and I think because it looks so complicated, people think that it is complicated. 
but it's really not. Not once you've got your head around the concept of what is your start point. Okay, so that's this color stitched. So we've done that, now we need to park our thread. So I'm gonna mark it on the chart to say we've stitched them. So we've stitched that one, we've stitched this one, and we've stitched all three of those. So let me zoom you out. So I can see straight away that there, this symbol that we've just stitched is in this section below. So I'm gonna pick, I mean, you could pick any of them. It doesn't matter where you park your thread, as long as it's in the right color symbol. So I'm going to go with this one here. Now obviously I've already got something parked in one because it's highlighted. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. You notice I count the bottom, the bottom part of the square. So that's one, two, three. I'm going to park in hole four. That's hole four after the one that has a strand of thread in it. So the easiest way to do that is zoom you in. You can see the same as me. Hole one has a thread in it. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. I've literally just counted down four empty holes. And that is where I'm gonna park that thread. See? So now we're going to mark that with our blue pencil, she says. She can find her blue pencil. We're going to mark that to say that's a parked thread. And the way to tell that everything's in the right place is once you've marked, I should have one space for a blank there, one space for an empty square there, and one space for an empty square there. So I should have three holes in between that parked thread and that parked thread. And if you want to check, you just go to your stitching. I've got one parked thread, I've got one, two, three empty holes, and then another parked thread. So we know it's right. There's, we don't need to argue that point. Okay, so next, next, next. We're gonna do these ones with the spots on because again, we've got, we've got one down here with spots that needs to be parked. I'll do this one last one with you and then I'll park everything for this square and I can show you sort of then how we, how we pick up our parked threads because that's, that explains it all then. I don't really think I need to keep explaining it because you can just keep rerunning this video and it will start to make total sense when you stitch. So let's have a look and see what that one is. That is 956. So I get my thread, 956. 956 is here. So I'm going to pick up my thread, she says, zip, 956. At this point, if you're working on two strand, you're going to get your two, your two free ends and put them together and thread them. I'm just doing one end because I'm doing single. Okay. So we're going to go down and we're going to do these these with the, with the circles in them. So if I push it down now. So it's this one. So I'm gonna bring my needle down. Again, you're gonna pick your loop up. I'm just gonna hold on to that tail for a minute until I can bring him down. I'm gonna bring him just so that he's, he's not through the hole, he's still there. But I'm actually gonna sort of push him back down the hole with my needle. 
and then I'm going to come up in my bottom right corner to do my second leg. It's very difficult to do this when I can't really see what I'm doing. Okay, that's, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Okay, so that is, that stitch there is done. So now I've got these two down here on the bottom row. But you can see it's actually really easy to do it once you've, once you've got some stitches in because you can already see what your spaces are. So it's almost like you're, you're mapping your way. Okay, so we're going to stitch these two here. Like so. And that is those stitched. So we're going to do the marking. So we're going to mark that, that stitched. And we know this is stitched. So now we need to go parking. So let me whiz you back out just marginally. Okay. So we can see there that that's a park thread. Now we don't even need to count, do we? Because you already know it's above the one that's already there. So it's one, two, number three down. So if I know that that's my park thread of number one, I'm going to go number two. So that's number one, number two, number three. So it needs to go in the square above, which it does park that thread. I'll just show you, bring you down. So we knew it needed to go in the one above the one that we just placed. So it will go in there. And that's the beauty of parking. Once you start parking and you've got a few in, it's so much easier to work out where you need to park. So I'm just marking the chart with the blue. Because we've just parked him in that square there. Right, I'm going to whiz off and finish the rest of these. And then I'm going to come back to you and we're going to, we're going to do a square where we've got some park threads in so that you can see how this all starts to come together and work. So let me just disappear and I'll be right back, but you won't know that. Okay, so I'm back and I've completed the square and I've parked all the threads. So everything that's marked is parked. There's the square of stitching. And because of the way that this chart has started, we've now got park threads in both directions. So we've got a load of park threads over to the right, and we've got a load of park threads down below. Now, ideally what will happen is you will just end up with threads that go downwards. But because obviously we had a lot of threads that basically didn't go downwards, but they went across ways, I will use my park threads to work my way across to the side to start because we're at the top of the chart. But by the time you've got all of these done, you will get to a point where you might not have any on, on the right, which is fine because at that point you just start using your downward ones. But to get us going, I'm going to start with the square to the right, this square, because we've got so many park threads in there. And that probably is the bit that looks much more daunting than it really should do. So we're going to go, go where, it, where it looks the worst. But in actual fact, it's so not. So there's no hard and fast rules when it comes to parking or how you, how you approach the whole thing. Um, here is, let me zoom you back out. So here is our portion of chart. That's the square that we've completed. So that is that there. And now I'm going to move over here and see if I can do this square and use the park threads. So it's much, at the moment it all seems like there's lots of cut, you know, there's lots of starting new threads and it seemed to take quite a long time to do that first square. Don't get put off by the first top section people because the, anything that's right at the top, you know that whatever color is in that square, you're going to need to put it in. Normally you would park in something below or to the side, depending on your chart. Once you start working with the park threads, things move along 
faster. So, okay, so all we're going to do is look at our chart and look at our park threads and it's going to be super easy. So if you look up here in my top left hand corner, I've got a symbol which repeats throughout the pattern and it's marked as blue. So when I go to my top, my top section, in my not top hole, because obviously the top, don't forget we're always starting in our bottom left, going to our top right, and then going bottom right into our top left. So in our bottom left hand corner of our top square, we should have a thread. Yeah? That confirms that what was on our chart is right. So we know we can stitch with this because we was expecting to have a thread in that hole. And we have a thread in that hole. And it's very unlikely that it's the wrong colour because somewhere along the line you would have found that out along the way. So on the chart, let's zoom you back out, you don't need it this close to you for my stitching. So on the chart, as you can see, so I've just picked up that thread, which is in our first hole, which is this colour here, and we're going we're gonna to stitch every instance of that symbol. So that's one half, and we have another half a leg. And then we'll finish those. And the idea is that you go through and you stitch everything that's parked first to clear the square. And then you start adding any new threads that need to be added. Okay, so we've got two there. Uh, we know that there's, we've got one next to that park thread there. So I'm gonna move all my park threads out of the way like so, and I know that it's next to this park thread that's all on its own, so I don't need to, I don't need to go counting, it's next to my park thread, so I will stitch that one. This is why parking I find so much easier, because once you've got some stuff in the squares, there's even less counting, because you're going to use everything else around you as your, as your guide. Okay, so we've stitched that one. Oh, there was one above that square as well, so we'll stitch that one. So we'll stitch that one. So we've stitched that one, we've stitched that one. Uh, there's one next to that park thread there. That park thread there is that one sticking out, so we'll go to the next square of that one and we'll stitch him. Um, then where have we got? All right, okay, so the park thread is there. The one next to that is a question mark, so the one next to that, I wanna stitch two in here. But it's just so much easier to do this because obviously I now it's not just a big blank square that I've got to do all the counting for. I've actually got stuff in it and I'm using what I've got around me to work out where I've got my stitching to go in based on not only an empty square but park threads. Okay, so we've done that one and that one. We've got another one over here. So it's in line underneath that one. So that one, down another one, across one. So he's gonna go in there. That's what I mean, there's nothing complicated about this. It's, you just have to think a bit simply. If you think simply, it will be simple. And like I said, I already know that this is my 10 square because that line is my 10th is my 10th hole because I have to stitch over the grey line for number 10. So that's that one down there. 
what else have we got? So we've got that one, we've got that one. Okay, so we need to come across. Not that one, not that one. The next one, which is that one. So we'll stitch him. And I think we've got one more, which is our second one in, so we don't need to count that because we know that where that one is, like so. So we have just stitched all instances of that thread in that colour. Just roll you in. There we go. That's all instances of that colour. So, looking at our chart now, she says, where's her pencils? Where's my trusty pencils? Please don't tell me I've lost my pencils already. That didn't take very long, did it? Ah, pencils. Okay, so we're gonna mark on our chart this is the importance of marking, of marking your chart, not in just one color, but two colors. Because you're gonna have a marked color for parked and a marked color for stitched. Okay, so we've stitched that. We've stitched that. We've stitched that. And if you like coloring in, then it's even better. I find this so much harder on paper. Hence the reason why I had to blow mine up into a huge grate. And because it was easier to try and show you what I was doing than on that tiny little chart with the tiny little squares. Hats off to those that actually do this from the chart on paper on a standard format because it's just too dinky for these eyes. Okay, so we've gone round, we've coloured in. We've coloured in all of our squares of that instance, I think. Uh, no, no, no. Yep, got that. Right, okay. So now we need to park our thread because we want to park. And you can see down here that your next instance of that thread is there. So we're just literally, let me zoom you in. So we know it's directly underneath the last square. That is the square in question. And we are going to park our thread directly underneath. Like so. Take our needle off. That thread is complete. So then we mark our chart with the blue to say there should be something in this square when you get there. This is how this works. <laughs> okay, so the next one, what have we got? Um, let's find another one. Okay, so let's go with this one here. So we grab our threads. We know it's this one because it's the only one on the top that we're expecting. There's a hole and a hole and then there's one. So that would be the equivalent of that's a stitch or that's the starting point of this one. That's the starting point of this one. The third hole along, it's got a thread in it. It's our blue one. That's fine to stitch. If you ever get to a hole that is marked to have a, have a thread in it, and it doesn't. Don't just start a new thread and do it. Finish all of your park threads. You will find somewhere in your park threads, you have a thread that is in a hole that is not marked. Then that way you will know that is your thread that you're looking for. Okay, so we're gonna stitch this little star shape one. And we don't have any instances of that again. So now we need to look at our chart further down. Zoom you back out. I know it's all a bit seasick, people. Um, so we're going to zoom our chart back out. Let me move that out of the way and move this up, shall we? So we need another one of those stars, which is here. Now, that's our line of one. So it's the second column in. We've got one in the top one. So it will be one, two, three, four, five. 
and it's going to go into number six. Remember, you're going to the bottom left hand corner. So it's that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, six. So to our stitching. That's the one with something in it because that is our, our thread that's blue and we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that is the last one. That is our stitch, number six. So you pull that one through and you take your needle off and then you just slip it somewhere out the way. And then we're going to mark our chart in blue. She says, although you can't see a thing, it's whiz you back out again. So I'm going to mark that thread as blue so that when I get there, I'm expecting to have something to stitch in that square. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to mark this one because we stitched him. So we'll turn him black. And then we're going to go to our next thread. So let's move our park threads out of the way. So we're going to go to our next thread. Don't move these. Okay, so our next thread will be this one here. It doesn't matter, you can go wherever you see fit. You could start at the bottom of the square or you could start at the top of the square. It makes no odds. Everyone has a preference. I'm going to go with the outside one, this one. And I just literally lift, lift it with my needle. And I think this has only got one on it. So we're going to thread our needle with this thread and we're just going to stitch this one square. Like so. Now, is there another instance of this thread in the vicinity? Now there's nothing in the vicinity of this thread that's the same. So I'm going to mark the chart to say that I've stitched him. So when you don't have another instance of him, we need to end the thread. It's as simple as that. So at that point, I will turn my work over, she says. Hold on, let's anchor some of that out of the way. You're going to have to ignore my slippers, people. Okay, don't judge the slippers. I'm an old lady. <laughs> Okay, so I don't think you can see this, so I'll move that up there. That is my horrific looking square, see? And all I'm gonna do is run my needle into that wonderful mess of messness. Run it through and through the other side. Cut my thread, that's it. Nothing fancy there. Doesn't need to look pretty. On a full coverage where you're parking, it will never look pretty. I forewarn you. Don't ever look at the back and think, oh, it needs to be pretty, but no chance. Okay, so we're back to the front. Right, I'm now gonna work my way through all my park threads. And where I can park something, I'll park it in below. If I can't park it, I'll end the thread. I'll do all that and I will come back to you. So you can all do the same thing. Pause the video for me. <laughs> Park all your threads in your square and then we come back. Okay, so as you can see, we're back. I've stitched almost all my park threads. So all of these were parked threads um, where I can and obviously I've marked them. So everything's been marked. Everything that's been stitched I've done, I've marked in the black. 
and where I could and I needed to park underneath, I've parked underneath or directly to the right so as not to have to just keep count, like keep ending threads. For those that there is no repeat in the square below or the square to the right, I've gone ahead and ended those threads. Now I wanted you to see this because this will come up when you're parking. So when you're doing your parking, there's going to come a time when you're going through your threads and this will happen. So you can see here that I haven't stitched this because it's still blue. So I've only got one thread left, which is this one. So you pick the thread up, but then when you look, my park thread should be coming out of this hole, not this hole. This hole that this park thread is coming out of is actually this one. So don't sit there and think, oh, well, that must be that one, because it isn't, because that one hasn't been turned blue. I know I haven't stitched that one. So the fact that I've only got one, one thread hanging out and one blue square coloured tells me that I've parked this in the wrong place and that this is a rogue thread. <laughs> so at that point, I will take it out of the place that it's in and stitch it where it belongs because that is its correct positioning. And the thing about parking is when you, when you mark your chart as to where your park threads are, it tells you straight away if there's a problem. If there's something wrong, you know about it. So now that I've rectified that, I can now mark him as stitched and know that when I now go and park this thread, which I'm going to do now, when I park this thread, it is this color. So you'll see down here, it's the third one down on the 10th row. So 10th row, one, two, three. I'm gonna park him there, job done. Simple as that people. And then I will mark this blue so that when I get there, I know I need a square. Now, now that we've cleared out all of our park threads, we've gone ahead and parked our parked threads elsewhere if it repeats, which is what all these are. If it doesn't repeat and it doesn't repeat close enough, then end your thread on the back, the same way as I showed you earlier on in the footage with the, um, with the two strands. Just turn your work over and finish your thread. And now I've just got parked threads again. So at this point, I will now start picking fresh colors and filling in this square and marking them off. And then again, the same thing is gonna happen as I showed you before. You'll stitch as many as you can there, and then you will park your threads in the square below or directly to its right if it's a top square. Once you work further down your chart, say for instance, we did this square and then we go down and we do this square here. And then I will go back up to this square. If say for instance, we get to here and there's nothing to park underneath, I won't park over on this side because whatever threads are gonna come from here will go into here. So you don't wanna end up with two lots of the same threads. You, I'll only park to the right when it is its very top, the very top of the chart, if that makes sense. So all the time that it, I'm stitching something in this square along the top, I will park my thread to the right or down, one out of the two. But once I get down to this level, the second square down, I won't park anything to the right because there's nothing to say that something in the top isn't gonna stitch and then come down into this section, if that makes sense. That's my personal preference. Like I said, this is something that you will tweak. This is something that you will learn whatever makes more sense to you. 
For me personally, under normal circumstances, once I've got my top row in, I only park downwards. If there's nothing beneath, I end the thread. If you want to do that from the very beginning, you can, but obviously it's a bit of a waste if you know you've got colours going across the top because you're going to need to start a new thread going across here. So at this point, you'll now just go in and you will fill this square in with all your new threads and you'll start parking underneath or to the right. And that is how you do the parking and that is how we start our stitching. So I'm not going to do any more than that because I think that's more than enough. I think that sort of explains what you need to do. Um, if you've got any questions, or some of it doesn't make sense, feel free to contact me, um, make a comment below. Obviously, I'm not just going to leave you hanging now. I haven't just done the video that shows you how to do the stitching and the parking and that's it. I'm going to do another video very, very soon um, where it will be me stitching this project and parking and I'll answer all of the questions that have come up so far. So if you have any questions, if something doesn't make sense, if you need me to show you something else to make it easier or you know something wasn't overly clear from this video, please leave me a comment in the questions below or leave me a comment in the comments below, sorry, and I will do my very best to address all of the comments. If you're doing it and it's working and it's making sense, please let me know because it would be nice to know that this video actually makes a difference to somebody. <laughs> so it makes sense to me, but just because it makes sense to me doesn't mean it will make sense to anyone else. So thank you all for hanging out with me. I hope these videos have been helpful in some way to you and that this last video explains more about the picking up of the parking threads so I think this video is more for those that were here predominantly more to learn the parking side and how you then work with those threads to actually stitch them in and then fill the square in so I hope it all makes sense if it doesn't make sense please comment below. If you comment below, obviously I will get to those comments. My intentions is to do further videos where I'll be stitching the same project um, and answering any questions that anyone's got. So it'll be like, I don't know, Q&A stitch with me videos is basically what it'll be. Massive thank you for all the, all the community support, for the lovely comments. Um, I've done the best I can. <laughs> If it's not enough, I'm sorry, but I did the best that I could. It becomes a lot more in-depth when you're actually recording something like this because you have to explain what it is that you're doing and I'm not necessarily the best person to explain it. So, like I say, massive thank you to everyone for all of your support and for the lovely, lovely comments so far. If you get stuck, you have any problems, you need another question answered, leave a comment below reach out to me. If it's not something that I can type there and then, or it's something that is likely to be a question that will come up further down the line, then I'll put it into sort of the Q&A Stitch With Me video that follows. So thank you all very, very much and happy stitching everyone. Bye bye for now.